Now, I was talking earlier about iodine allergy, and I wanted to address this because it's a question that comes up a lot. I've been told I was allergic to iodine, or I went in and I did a, a radioactive dye test, and um, you know, I had a bad reaction, and my doctor told me I was iodine allergic. Or I hear this too, I'm shellfish allergic, that must mean I'm iodine allergic, right? There's a lot of misinformation out there about iodine allergy. First, just let me say this, you cannot be allergic to iodine. It's impossible. You can't be allergic to iodine. Why? Iodine is an essential human nutrient. It's essential. Your body can't function without iodine. So it's impossible for you to be allergic to it. So if you've been told you're allergic to it, it's not because you are, it's because you've been given misinformation. Now what happens to many of you is you, you do like a, a test that contains a radioactive iodine and, uh, and you have a poor reaction to it. What Most likely what you're reacting to is not the iodine. You're most likely reacting to the radioactive substance or you're reacting to some of the other fillers that are in it. And so again, don't blame the iodine. Your body needs it. Um, and there are a number of different iodine containing compounds that are administered medicinally or medically. And again, you can't be allergic to the iodine, but you can be allergic to the other ingredients within that product. So it's important to understand that. So iodine is an essential human nutrient found in the thyroid gland. It's used in the sense of, as I showed you earlier, used in the synthesis of the thyroid hormones, thyroxine and, and triiodothyroxine, which is T4 and T3, right? And, and so this, this was a study, a full-blown kind of research literature review. So the results of literature review indicated that iodine has not been shown to be the allergen responsible for allergic reactions to iodinated contrast media. Uh, amiodarone, povidone iodine, and other iodine-containing compounds. So again, these are just commonly iodine-containing compounds that people react to. Again, not because of the iodine. Iodine is not the issue. There's a lack of evidence to support cross-reactivity between iodine-containing compounds and so-called iodine-allergic individuals. So if, you, um, if you've had a bad reaction, think more along the lines of, I reacted to something other than the iodine, whatever that was within that, uh, within that agent, whether it was a dye or a contrast or whatever it might have been, but you cannot be allergic to iodine. It's important to understand that. I see that all the time. People are scared to death of taking some iodine because somewhere along the lines, they had a non-nutritionally trained doctor or healthcare provider tell them that they were somehow allergic to it and it was just, you know, or they, or they assumed there was this allergy. Okay, so let's talk about food sources. If we're talking about grain-free, gluten-free, food sources of iodine, my opinion, one of the best places to get it is wild-caught seafood. Now, what did we say earlier is that a lot of this seafood from the Fukushima fallout is radiation contaminated. So, you know, the iodine in them, are you, are you getting radiation? Is the iodine within the seafood itself just neutralizing the radiation? Or are you also getting exposure to radiation? Um, and it's not having much of an effect. Nobody knows. It's not really been really well studied, and that's not to deter you from eating seafood. But I, I would say, you know, this is a caution that we do have around seafood. Is that is that Fukushima radiation fallout? Now, again, that was years ago, but and and we know it's still part of the problem. This is again, this is one of the reasons why I like iodine supplementation. That's why if you ever look at at my multivitamin formulation, one of the ingredients in it, and most multis don't, is, is iodine. And that's, this is one of the reasons why, because you're one of your best sources of natural iodine in the diet is radiation contamination. Now you can eat kelp and you can eat seaweed, but they came, come from the same ocean. And uh, so the same problem exists there. You can also eat pasture eggs, but this is going to be dependent on the soil where the chickens are grown. And so depending on where you're getting your eggs from, you may or may not be getting adequate iodine from that particular soil. Same thing with organic A2 milk. Now, some people with gluten issues have cross-reactivity to dairy, and so that would be a bad idea for those of you that have that issue. Uh, if you're not quite sure what A2 milk is versus other kinds of milk, you need to go back and review my, my discussion on A1, A2. It's very important because a lot of people react to dairy and they don't even know why. But, um, but these are going to be three of your main sources. And so this, for most people with gluten issues, is out. This is radiated, which leaves us here. Now, what is a pastured egg? This leads us to the definition of what a pastured egg is or what a cage-free 
This is what a lot of you buy. They, they label them as cage-free. Now, cage-free just means they're not in a cage. Cage-free, basically, if you call a manufacturer a chicken farmer, cage-free means they're really in a cage, but instead of the door being... This is my little chicken in here. I'm a terrible artist, by the way, in case you couldn't tell. Um, that little chicken is still inside. The door is open, but they're not really free, truly free to roam about. They're, they're predominantly cage-free because technically this isn't a cage because the door's open, but they're still not really free-ranging. You want, truly, you want free-range where they're out there eating bugs and grass, digging in the dirt. Um, this is what you want with your, with your birds, right? Because that's going to give you the healthiest egg. Um, so if you're looking at cage-free and you can't get clarity on what that means from the manufacturer of that, of that or that egg company, then you're, what you're probably looking at is nothing better than regular conventional egg. You want free-range, happy chickens roaming around, getting sunshine, getting exercise, and eating, eating the dirt and the soil and the bugs and the grass and everything else. That's where they're going to get that iodine to make that egg iodine rich for you. So again, these are your, some of your best sources, but they're limited. Again, it's one of the reasons why I'm an advocate, an advocate of supplementation. Okay, so we're gonna have this up for you on Gluten-Free Society. So again, if you come visit us over there, we'll have all these recipes up, but these are just different recipes that my team and I put together for you that are options that are rich in iodine and grain-free. So if you're looking at how you can incorporate more iodine in your diet through food, we've got five really fantastic recipes there for you as well. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.